Hi, I'm Abhilash and welcome to my channel. So in today's tutorial, I will try to explain how to perform FFT on Arduino. So for that I have prepared one code or a function for Arduino that can do so. And I am calling it Easy FFT because it is very easy and straightforward to implement it to your data. So to check this, I am going to use this data as my input. So I have prepared this data simply in Excel and it is nothing but combination of two sine waves. So out of which one sine wave has frequency of around 5.6 Hz and another is having frequency of 14 Hz. So I will try to uh, check, um, I will try to do FFT of it on my Arduino and I will be using FFT of Scilab as a benchmark from, uh, from which I will compare the result of my Arduino. So let's begin. So to do FFT, you will be requiring uh, this code. So this code is available on my Instructable profile. A uh, link is there in description. You can go there and download it. So for example, you want to apply FFT to some of your own code. So how to go for it? So first we have to start by copying this whole section to your code. So this. Uh, we are we have to paste it at the to top of your code because we want this to array to be defined as a global variable so out of which first is sign data so which is nothing but value of sign for from 1 to 90 so obviously we can also use inbuilt function of arduino for sign or cos but it is way too slow slow for our application and next is fpix so after running this FFT, all of our uh, top 5 frequency will be stored in this array. So we can access it from uh, this value here. F peak 0 will be having highest frequency, 1 will be second highest and third highest and so on. And apart from that obviously you have to copy this complete FFT function also. So just simply copy and paste it after a uh, loop. So here in this video I am not going to explain uh, how this code works but only I will explain how to apply it for your application. So yes now we have set up everything now just take our uh, data and try to perform FFT. So I am simply copying uh, this data from here and I think I am storing it as an array which I am calling data 60 data with 64 length and just paste it yeah so this is the array where we have complete data and now we will also start serial combination because we have to print and see all of data also okay now uh, let's now let's see our FFT function it is very simple and straightforward you have to simply write FFT and then you have to define um, which array of is uh, of which array you want to perform FFT in our case it is data where we have stored all of our values the next is number of samples which is simply 64 and third is sampling frequency in our case i am considering it as a hundred then we now after performing fft we'll print the top two values of uh, our fft Okay, so now everything is set up. Now we'll upload this on Arduino and see what results it gives. So yes, port is set up. Let's upload and go it to you. Okay, so now let's see what our serial 
okay so here we are getting two frequencies one is 6.25 and another is 14 which is actually very close to our uh, our data where do we have where we have frequency of 5.6 and 14 uh, still it is not exact value it is very close but not exact uh, so it is because of number of samples so if you want to have very accurate output then you must give it higher samples which is actually not possible with low memory uh, microcontrollers so in case of Arduino Nano you can go up to 128 numbers of sample okay so still this value are very close and now we will try to see uh, what raw output it gives so if you have studied FFT then you might be already knowing that output from it is a complex number from which we can calculate amplitude of various frequencies so first just remove this uh, two frequencies and sorry So first just remove these two frequencies and now we will uncomment this section yeah so it will print all of our uh, frequencies in terms of complex number so yeah this is the output from Arduino that we will try to verify from scilab so just copy this data yeah so if we compare both of this value it is closely matching it is not exactly similar uh, which is due to reason that we are using sine and cos as a some approximation function if we use uh, here if you can see there are some difference it is because of it so now let's try to convert it in sine uh, inbuilt sine and cos functions yes so first we have to convert this 360 degree to radians which will lead to 6.28 and now cos and sine functions here yeah. yeah now if you see now it is very close to what we had we got before but one thing you have to keep in mind that it also takes more time compared to uh, approximation functions so uh, let's again go back to our old functions only because that will also give easily give big frequencies but not the accurate values okay so that's how we can uh, we can see this complex output and we can also get in terms of magnitude by simply uncommenting this section So yes this is the output and if you see the maximum amplitude we got for the frequency 6.25 and second highest is 14 so here we have to check for peak not for maximum values so here values are increasing increasing this peak and decreasing so first we have to detect the peaks and then we have to pick the uh, peak with highest amplitude and again if we compare it with scilab let's see how close it is so yes if you can see these values are, are again close not exactly similar obviously but very close and one thing that, that you might notice is that here we are only printing 32 output whereas in scilab we have 64 outputs so here we are only printing 32 because uh, it is nothing but a repetitions 
and it is mirroring against against center so yeah here we are calculating only up to 32 because after that values are same only and it is not uh, effort uh, worth doing okay so that's how we can calculate the various frequency now again let me comment everything out which is not required okay so now we will try to see how much time it takes to perform the FFT so that uh, you can optimize your code according to your application So I will be printing a time in microsecond uh, that will be taken for various cases. So first let's, let's check for 32 numbers of sample. Okay, yeah. So yes for 32 numbers of sample it is taking around 11 milliseconds again now let's see for 64 so you see it is uh, 25 milliseconds and now go for, let's go for 128 100. So it is 57 second milliseconds and now I will check if we use inbuilt sine and cosine functions how much time it takes Okay, so as you can see there are 20 milliseconds of additional time is required if we use inbuilt sine and cosine functions for 128 number of samples so yes if you are if you want precision not the speed then you must go for sine and cosine as they are definitely much more accurate than our approximation functions So I hope uh, this code and this function will be useful for your Arduino projects and I would like to thank all the references which I studied and that helped me, help me to um, prepare these codes. So links for these references as well as code are there in the description. So this code also may consist of um, bugs so I will highly recommend to test it properly before applying it to your applications so again thanks for watching and if you really found it useful then uh, please follow